my first job uh, i was uh, paid uh, 70 bucks per month um so that was a fun uh, dollars a month yeah <laughs> that was a fun uh, fun uh, fun part i think now the salaries uh, in it uh, in romania at least are um, uh, on average a bit higher than uh, uh, than spain for example wow. so uh, uh, the the level of demand is at an all times high Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley, in partnership with Lomitech, and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Halal at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today we're going to Romania. Meet Marius Hanganu, managing partner of Tremend. Marius has been a manager in the software industry for over 20 years. He has been overseeing complex projects from sales to deployment and support. He serves as the managing partner of Tremend with a focus on operations and shaping the organization to become a top software Romanian provider and he's well on his way. Meet Marius. Marius Hanganu, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. All the way from Romania, how are you? Uh, good. Nice to meet you, Michael. Good to be here. It is nice to meet you too. I'm looking forward to hearing both about your journey and also about the Romanian ecosystem and, and about this idea of software development as a service. Uh, you're the managing partner of Tremend Software Consulting. I believe over the last 15 years, you've done more than 700 projects worldwide, which is an unfathomable amount of projects. And, and I'm sure that you've learned so much about you know, software development, its challenges, outsourcing, and 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 how how th- these types of of companies interact with with the living living and breathing R and D world. So, Marius, maybe walk me through your own journey within Romania and and how you end up understanding that what you want to be doing is creating this software development consulting service. Absolutely, uh, my pleasure. So, um, um, I think I had my first. Uh computer around uh, 10 or 11 years old and uh, I got hooked to it I mean uh, you know uh, following uh, algorithms and uh, and uh, implementing and uh, making the whole machine work uh, was something that uh, somehow fitted my profile uh, my profile being uh, again uh, from even earlier uh, as you know I was uh, dreaming of uh, a world where where uh, I could uh, so for example one very vivid dream i had as a child was coordinating a set of drones to fly <laughs> um, in any uh, i don't know uh, formation and position and explore now this is uh, if i'm sure you've seen the demonstration with the thousands and uh, of drones flying uh, over parades and everything like that so it's very <laughs> real uh, i think we're living amazing times so um, um interacting with uh, computers was uh, one one uh, one thing that uh, uh, you know i i, I uh, enjoyed and uh, from that point on you know uh, the career and uh, um, a strive for uh, excellence a personal strive for excellence was something that uh, has, uh, has driven me and that drive uh, you know uh, um for example, I don't believe in part time. I'm a, I'm not a fan of part time. I don't think uh, doing a, a, a part time job in X or Y would uh, help you uh, achieve uh, you know higher standards and higher goals. Tell um, me a little bit about that, Marius. Before we continue on journey, I think this is an important topic to discuss. Uh, you know, today's generation, my generation, the millennials, we we, we love taking on a few different projects uh, and 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 seeing how we can because because there's so many opportunities today. So, what is your take on part time versus full time, and, and why do you why do you think that? Well, um, I would rather say that for me personally, uh, mm-hmm. and I think it's true or valid for many many other people. Um, uh doing um how do maybe we should uh, use uh, the term meaningful uh work right. uh and, or deep dive uh those are also terms that uh, relate to, to to the idea of part-time whenever your attention is uh split in multiple ways i think uh, uh you aren't achieving your uh, uh let's say your best um you aren't exploring the depth of the domain deep enough and when I'm talking about the depth of domain, uh, 
for example, uh, um, we are 600 in the organization, and uh, but the level of uh, refinement in analyzing, uh, uh, let's say, internal uh, data, let's just use a, a generic term data, uh, is uh, to such a high level uh, because of this deep dive, uh, uh, let's say, uh, type of work uh, that I, I don't think uh, doing it part time or in, in any other way would would, would uh, you one would achieve this uh, this sort of uh, of uh, sophistication let's say so that's my uh, my my concept i think only if you did dive you you would um, reach this uh, level of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, sophistication. Yeah. Now, from your perspective, is that is it mainly an issue of of the amount of time that you spend? Is it the the focus that your brain needs to get to to be able to really understand the problem and and come up with this with with the right solution? What what are the limitations of part time that that maybe inhibit you from from achieving that same level of sophistication? Um. Um, should I maybe maybe a parallel? It, it would be like uh, doing uh, yoga or uh, meditation, but uh, listening to music at the same time. Okay. So uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, when the attention is uh, split, uh, you know, uh, you, you you lose some of the things you would otherwise achieve uh, through, I don't know, techniques like. Uh, uh, I don't know, transcendental meditation, for example, like the one that, uh, you know, a lot of CEOs are using and so on. Uh, if right. that makes sense. No, no, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, Mario, sorry. I stopped you. Continue, please, on, on your own journey leading up to Tremend. Absolutely. Uh, basically, my, my, my focus was uh, uh, in the early years uh, to the point of, for example, I, I used to, to uh, play in a national basketball championship. Uh, we used to be national champions as well, but whenever uh, I had the, so at the moment I had to make a choice, I decided I have to make a choice between uh, you know also doing sports or uh, doing deep dive on my um, on my IT career, and I clearly choose has chosen my my IT career, uh, but um, at that time uh, I felt that that this is a very clear choice. Should I do this? Should I split my attention in into two? Because trainings with the with the team were taking a lot of time, you know, like every day, a few hours, or should I, you know, just uh, go uh, full full head on uh, with, uh, I don't know, learning, exploring, building, uh, and uh, improving myself on, on IT. So that's uh, that's sort of like. Um, the mindset I used to have uh, at that point, and I mm-hmm. still do. So, um, at some point, uh, you and myself uh, um, got the opportunity to to work in uh, Silicon Valley along the many Stanford graduates, and uh, the whole energy of the environment I think uh, um, um, infused us with uh, with uh, with a uh, uh, drive and uh, uh, a need. Uh, we already had a lot of friends that were appreciating us. Uh, oh, guys, you are doing great, uh, very good uh, <laughs> working and so on. Why don't you start something? So um, I think uh, that was uh, the catalyst and that's when, um, you know, the whole thing uh, sparked. And from that point on, you know, uh, with the whole IT market uh, growing and growing, especially in the last year, for example, uh, it, it, was, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was quite clear. Um, there was one thing, uh, because we are named uh, in the region several years in the row now, uh, the fastest growing uh, tech company. Uh, and uh, maybe that's a differentiator. Uh, how did we uh, manage to, to, to grow so fast? So um, that was, uh, you know, um, that itself is, is a story in which um, we managed to find a recipe on how to... Um, deliver more and more projects and um, um, continue to attract people, uh, high quality engineers, uh, very top notch engineers and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, build and deliver on those projects. So that was, uh, again, another challenge. And now we're up to this point. So, so two things that I'd like to focus on and, and pick your brain on. One is this, the Romanian tech ecosystem. You're starting out in 2006. You're on, you, you have this conviction that the trend of IT needs is growing 
Uh, and obviously you're right because 15 years later, you have more than 400 employees and, and, and more than 700 projects under your belt. And the second one is, is really the question of growth. So when you've figured out sort of this recipe and sort of this, how does this thing work? How do you actually manage to keep it growing at a fast pace while keeping the high quality? But let's start with the first question about the Romanian ecosystem and, and what, what are we experiencing today versus perhaps what also was there in 2006 when you started this? Um, my first job, uh, I was uh, paid uh, 70 bucks per month. Um, so that was a fun, $70 uh, dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun, uh, fun, uh, fun part. I think now the salaries uh, in it, uh, in Romania, at least are, um, uh, on average a bit higher than, uh, uh, than Spain, for example. Wow. So, uh, uh, the, the level of demand is at an all times high. Um, uh, and uh, um, the story is uh, probably quite simple. Romania has a, a, a very, um, um, I mean, the, the Soviet influence or the Russian influence back from uh, from those days, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, um, pushed us as uh, as um, driving our educational system to uh, to form very. Uh, uh, technical guys focus on mathematics and uh, other exact science was uh, sciences were uh, were um, uh, characteristic of, of uh, and are still are a characteristic of the educational system um, now um, our luck let's say in the whole story is that uh, uh, we are uh, probably the largest country in the region in uh, in eastern mm -hmm. europe uh, and um, the fact that we did uh, you know, had this uh, push towards uh, the the US and try to to break ourselves from the Russian influence, and uh, fortunately, were at that point uh, um, created a, a whole culture in Romania, a more let's say Western type of. So, you know, people are looking at Western models. Uh, of course, there are influences from the region, from the Balkanic area, and so on. But uh, the fact that we are uh, very Western in mindset and so on, and with the uh, pretty big uh, IT labor force uh, helped us being uh, uh, one of the favorite destinations, let's say, in uh, in terms of, uh, you know, developing IT uh, projects and so on. So um, um, clients from Western Europe, for example, uh, when deciding to, to make an investment in, I don't know, Ukraine or the former Soviet bloc uh, or other countries in the region, um, you know, the, the, the the choice is sometimes quite simple. Now, there are variations, and there have been variations through years in which uh, uh, maybe at some point we are more expensive than other countries, but then other countries caught up with, uh, with the pricing and so on. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, an educated buyer, if uh, one is looking at choosing uh, where should I uh, uh, you know, develop my projects in which country, uh, this uh, cultural factor is, is a pretty strong one uh, in favor of, uh, of Romania. And uh, with an output of, uh, I don't know, some uh, dozen thousand uh, engineers per year, I think. Uh, wow. And with, uh, yeah, uh, I think the latest quotes were around 200,000 uh, IT specialists. Uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it helped us, uh, and I think the IT industry is uh, probably the largest contributor right now. Uh, it used to be the second, I think, is the largest contributor right now to the uh, GDP of uh, the Romanian GDP. Wow. So tell me a little bit about Tremend itself and how you're, how you're thinking through the growth of recent years. So beyond, you know, finding product market fit and, 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 and finding the right way to work with these different, with these different clients, how do you manage to keep growing at a fast pace to be named, uh, you know, over several years, the fastest growing tech company? That that used to be, um, um, that, that, that is still, uh, and used to be a very big challenge. Um, I think um, um, most businesses are people businesses, not just mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> The services uh, sector, like um, like um, professional service sector, like ourselves, um, and uh, um, for example, um, one of the pillars of this growth was the fact that uh, as a uh, culture, our company, you know, uh, um, 
try to 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 attract uh, also people, not just very good uh, technical, um, you know, experts and so on. Um, especially in the IT sector, where uh, a very good uh, engineer, you know, sometimes you know, if you spend too much time with the code and the screen, you know, that's where your skills are. So. Um, Right. Developing also your human, uh, yeah, uh, interaction <laughs> skills and so on. It's uh, it's a matter of time where you place your time, you know. And um, uh, yeah, I think uh, that created a, a bit of a snowball effect. I mean, the, constantly the feedback about us in various polls and so on is that the team is great, that it's very nice to work there and uh, learn from others and so on, and that uh, helped us attract more and more. Uh, uh, on the other uh, on the other side of the uh, on the other side uh, working with clients and uh, having uh, let's say uh, people that it's nice to interact with uh, created the, the the same kind of effect i mean clients seeing that uh, okay these guys are good and uh, it's also nice to interact with them um, uh, that uh, you know uh, also sparked the 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 demand and um, Probably, I'm going to switch to a bit of a bit uh, a bit of a different topic. But uh, probably, um, uh, there's a match uh, if you've read uh, Ray Dalio's uh, principles and uh, and uh, concepts of radical transparency and so on. I think uh, there's a, there's a lot of overlap between uh, the culture that uh, uh, Ray Dalio is describing in his book and what we're doing here. So. Um, yeah. Um, you know, admitting to the mistake, trying to fix and having a positive attitude instead of, uh, you know, uh, masking the error, tricking the customer and so on, uh, uh, created this, uh, okay, maybe because everybody makes mistakes, maybe if these guys uh, made a mistake, uh, but they admit to it, they work to it, you know, that that's making things uh, nice and pleasant. So, yeah, that created a, a whole, uh, a whole, um, you know, uh, supply and demand, uh, let's say, uh, stream. And uh, uh, one good news uh, this month, uh, so like one week ago, uh, we had uh, 42 new colleagues joining in one day. Wow, in one 42. day? Yeah, that's, no. Uh, it's no, by no means at, uh, you know, Accenture level or so on, but 42 is like, uh, almost like a, an entire company. So that was very, very um, nice. Unbelievable! Forty-two new employees in one day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No wonder you're named that one of the fastest growing uh, tech companies in in Romania and again, I guess in Europe and the world because I, I I don't know I don't know how many companies are onboarding 42, 42 employees in one day and I I don't even know how that's possible while maintaining this culture of integrity of excellence uh, yeah. and and it sounds like what you're doing with tremendous is really is really fascinating and you're and you know, your attitude towards the, towards building this company in the ecosystem, I think is just uh, really inspiring. And so, uh, Marius, I really want to thank you for coming. I have a few more questions about, about yourself sure. more. And I want to take you back to your childhood. I want to take you back to before, you know, perhaps in basketball or in sports or anything else, what really fascinated you? What drove your curiosity as a child? Um, I think, uh, um, um, so one of my favorite games as a child was, uh, you know, um, um, back in those days, uh, uh, real time strategy games, uh, weren't uh, <laughs> hype. Uh, there were no computers, you know, that, um, uh, so much and, uh, uh trying to uh, play with, uh, with, you know, armies of, uh, various, uh, <laughs> uh, types and, you know, uh, running scenarios and so on, uh, was one of my, uh, most uh, deep and intense types of play, uh, playfulness, let's say, uh, and a game that I used to play. Um, 20 years cool. forward, uh, I think, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, or 30 years forward, I think uh, that uh, uh, joy of, uh, of playing those games is still reflected in what I do. I mean, I, I uh, absolutely love my, my job, you know, down to the very last minutes of work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there are really more things. Fun. Yeah, there are more things, but uh, that's, that type of, of big play is uh, yeah. amazing. And so what, that, that's a great segue to what inspires you today in your daily life, your daily work? Um, I think, uh, the, the, I mean, uh, the, 
there was certainly a, a very uh, technical aspect to my uh, formative years. Um, mm. And uh, I used to be, uh, and probably still am to some degree, very uh, analytical and, uh, you know, sometimes forget the human factor. But uh, as, uh, as you progress through through the age, I think the, the quality of the relations, um, again, following on the principles uh, book of Ray Dalio, the quality of the human relations uh, with, uh, with your uh, um, with people around you, let's say, not just co-workers, but family as well, is uh, something that uh, creates um, um, uh, a lot of, 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 of reward. And uh, uh, somehow the focus from solving technical problems, which I believe that, you know, any technical problem can be solved with uh, uh, enough time and so on, uh, uh, focused more on the, uh, let's say, uh, people problem, trying to understand how the mind of, of, of my mm -hmm. colleagues uh, work uh, and uh, how the mind of a social group works, uh, because uh, the dynamics within a group are um, following, the, um, I would say, similar rules to one individual, but also uh, they have their own rules. Yeah. So that 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 type of of, of uh, dynamics and relationships uh, is fascinating me right now. Amazing. And what are three words you would use to describe yourself? Well, um, I think uh, being driven is one of my uh, main um, characteristics. Characteristic. Striving for balance. Uh, so uh, balance is working uh, always. Uh, it's like an, an alert a system that's <laughs> alerting me when you work too much or you stay too much on one topic and so on. And um, uh, somehow this um, mindfulness, so uh, deep dive, deep dive uh, uh, type of work, whenever I go into something, I can, you know, <laughs> go to the <laughs> very bottom of, uh, of it and uh, still in general, right. I can lose myself in working on one topic. Yeah. Amazing. Marius, thank you very, very much. This was great. Uh, I really love what you're doing. And, uh, and I think there are so many lessons to be learned from your journey. And I really thank you for coming and uh, stay safe thank and you, stay Michael. healthy.